watercolour pencils for beginners. Today I'm going to show you all of the basic techniques and materials that you need to get started. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel we do all things watercolour as well as drawing, a little bit of mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists too. So please do consider subscribing. If you click the little bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. Make at least one free video a week here on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So what's so great about watercolour pencils? Well, for one thing, they're very versatile. And for a lot of people, they sort of bridge that gap between drawing and watercolour painting. But even experienced watercolourists like me absolutely love them. They can be used in a mixed media situation as well. So if you are completely new to watercolour pencils, perhaps you haven't even purchased any yet. Maybe you've got some and you haven't used them much. Or perhaps you have used them, but you're just not feeling that confident. This video is going to address all of those problems. And we're going to start by looking at materials. We're going to work through different blending techniques and just show you how to go about starting and completing a successful watercolour pencils painting. So let's look first just simply at what watercolour pencils are, how they work and what you might need to purchase. So here I've got some of my watercolour pencils. These ones came in a set. There's actually two layers to this set. These are the Caran d'Ache Museum quality, but I've got several brands in my stash. Now, you might be asking yourself, does quality matter? Yes, it does really. Now, of course, you can get started with any watercolour pencils that you have. But the one thing that you will notice is that it does make a big difference how much you pay for them. It's actually better to get a smaller set with less colours and get a higher quality. And that's because what you're paying for is pigment. Now, if you look at the cheap sets, sometimes they're absolutely huge and you get a really beautiful tin. You're all laid out nicely and you get loads of colours. But don't be deceived. What you're paying for is pigment and if you buy a cheap set you're not getting good pigment and you may find them a little bit frustrating. As I said get started with what you have. You don't have to buy them in a set like this. Now if you're in a country where it's quite hard to get uh, supplies you may find that ordering a set online is your best bet but if you're somewhere where you have easy access to lots of online art stores or even lots of real life art stores you're going to find you can just pop in and buy single colour pencils. So what I'd suggest is if you've got a cheap set, go and buy yourself one or two more pricey ones and see how you like them. You can always build your collection up slowly. It's much better to do that than to shell out on these massive sets of 72 that are really quite low quality. You're going to find they just don't make very strong colours. So what are watercolour pencils? Let's have a look. I've got three types of pencil here. So they're all coloured pencils. Now this one here is a standard coloured pencil. So we'll pop some of that down. Now this one is not water soluble as I will show you in a moment. The next one I have is a pencil from my set. So this is a watercolour pencil and you notice that when they're applied on paper obviously they're different colours but they look the same sort of thing don't they when you pop them down like this. The last one I've got is an ink tense pencil. So this is by Derwent. Now Derwent do ordinary watercolour pencils as well. This one's called ink tense. Now again they all look exactly the same when they're on the paper. So let's look at the difference between them. So we'll add some water and here's the first one. You can see that apart from a few sort of scraps of pigment that are loose on the surface it's going nowhere when I add water to it. That's because it's for coloured pencil work only. The next one is my watercolour pencil. So they'll almost always have watercolour pencil written on the side or on the tin that you get them in. And you can see here that this one dissolves into watercolour paint and pigment when I add water to it. And I can actually spread the pigment quite far. Let's look at the third one. So this is our Derwent Ink Tense. Now this one appears to be like a watercolour pencil, but it's actually an ink. Now it's very, very beautiful and very vibrant. If you want vibrant colours, you probably won't get brighter than these Ink Tense pencils. But it's important to notice that these are not watercolour pigment, these are ink. Therefore they will not re-wet once dry, so you can wet them once like that and then they stay put. So if you do purchase those, that's just something to be aware of. So that's the pencil sorted out, but obviously you're going to need paper and a few other things as well. So let me show you the basic supplies that you're going to need for your watercolour pencils paintings. So let's talk about what you need to get started with painting with watercolour pencils. You're going to need your pencils, of course. You're going to need some paper. Now this is watercolour paper. You can see that it's quite thick. 
It does come in various surfaces, don't worry too much about that. To start with, just get the standard surface that's in most blocks and pads. You don't want to be using printer paper or any kind of thin sketch paper though, because what's going to happen is your paper's going to go very, very bumpy. Now, watercolour paper, if you're putting lots of water on, will still go slightly bumpy. If you don't like that, there's a couple of things you can do. The first is to use what's called a block. That's a pad of paper that is gummed around three edges so that you can sort of go around with a knife afterwards and lift the sheet off. So it kind of holds it in place a little bit. You can also just simply tape your paper down. Something that will come off without ripping your paper, like a washi tape, will be good for that. Again, it won't stop the wrinkling of your paper completely, but it's going to help a lot. The last thing you can do, which is what I do, is to stretch your watercolour paper onto a board. There's a lot of nonsense talked about paper stretching, that it's time consuming and difficult. It's actually very quick and easy. It's far more than we've got scope for in this video, but I'll leave a link to a video I've got explaining all about it in the description of this video. If you're buying a sketch pad and you want to work in a sketch pad, you can get sketch pads with very thick paper, indeed even watercolour paper, so always look out for that. You don't want to be working on very thin paper because you're just going to find that it buckles and wrinkles. You may even go through the paper if you put enough water on it. What else do you need? You're going to need obviously a water jar, this is just a jam jar, and you're going to need a paintbrush. So something like this, this is just a synthetic watercolour paintbrush, they come in different sizes. Although these have a point, they're actually called round. So if you're buying online, you need to choose something that's called a round brush and it should have a good point on it. You want to remove the plastic tube and leave that off because they tend to catch little hairs if you try and put them back on. Of course, there are tons of different shapes of paintbrushes, but you only really need a brush like this to get started. A couple more things that will be useful to you will be a pencil sharpener. I actually like my Helix desk sharpener for this, the barrel type. This is a good sharpener, but any kind of sharpener will do. And you're going to need some paper towel or some cotton rag in order to dab your brush on occasionally because you're going to find sometimes there's too much water on your brush or on the paper and if you actually dab at the paper you'll leave marks so it's best if you have too much water on your brush to remove it by dabbing it on to a piece of paper. There are other accessories you can get but that's really all you need to get started. Now it's great to see a whole box full of colours but do you actually know what colour they look like when they're on the paper or when they're applied thickly or thinly? What you need to do once you've got your watercolour pencils is to make yourself a little colour chart and this goes for any medium that you buy. It never quite looks the same, that colour on the outside of the pencil, the outside of the tube, whatever the medium is, it never looks the same as when it's applied. So making yourself a little colour chart is going to be so so helpful but there's actually a special way that you need to do it. It's really simple and really fast. It'll feel a nice rainy Sunday afternoon and you'll be so glad that you did it. So let's talk about how to make some nice colour charts for your watercolour pencils. So again you want to use watercolour paper. I tend to cut mine so that it fits in one of those folders that you have with sort of the clear plastic inserts so that you keep it protected because if you just leave it out once you've made it you're going to find it gets splashed with water and all sorts. So you want to put it in one of those plastic document holders perhaps and you want to group similar colours together and you may find that when you get your set of pencils they're not actually grouped together. I've, uh, well, this one's out of place, isn't it? But um, I actually tend to rearrange mine so that they go in um, you know, an order that I like. You don't have to be too concise about it. You can put all the browns together, all the greens together, something like that. And making a colour chart will enable you to know the difference between them because when you look at colours like this, or indeed these two red ones that I've got out here, there's very little difference to be seen here. But there are a few clues. So with a good brand, they generally will have a name. So this one here is light cadmium red. And this one here says scarlet. But more importantly, with a good brand, they will have a number. So we'll have a look here. This 3510, it's just something to do with the, uh, the product. But this one here is the one you want. This one is 070. This one is 560. They'll normally be a three digit number and they will enable you to identify that color exactly. So when you make your chart, you want to write the colors next to them. You can put the names if you want or you can just put the numbers. And if I run out of this, I'll be able to go back to the manufacturer and buy color 560 again and know I get the exact same color. It's a bit like hair dye, it all has color coding. So what you're gonna do then is once you've made your, your nice color chart of boxes, you can fill them in. 
what we want to do is add varying amounts of water to this. So we don't just want to know what color it is. We want to know what color it is when it's light, but also when it's dark. So we're gonna fill in like this, and I'm just gonna take a bit less color up this end. I'm actually going to stop before I get to the end of the box. And we'll do the same with this color. So just spreading it down fairly evenly. You can do them neater than this if you want to. I find that I always make a mistake when making color charts. You know, something always goes in the wrong box. But it's important to realize that they're a practical tool above all else and not just start again because you've made one tiny mistake. So let's get some water now. So I'm gonna put my water on, but I'm gonna start this end where there isn't any pigment. If I start up here, I'm just gonna spread the pigment right the way down to this side of the box. So I'm going to go up like this and going to spread evenly. You can see there, even if you had quite scruffy edges, we can get quite a nice smooth edge around like that. I can rinse my brush, can dry it slightly, try to avoid leaving puddles, and can just spread this a little bit so that I now know what that color looks like when it's applied very strongly and when it's watered down a lot. So let's do the other one. And here we are, we can see that this one, the first one was almost sort of a, almost a peachy orange color, wasn't it? This one is much more of a sort of a berry red. I have started the wrong end there. That's okay, as long as you don't continue dragging that color all the way down. And here we go, up from the other side, like this, and not allowing that color to come too far down. And here we can see the difference between these two reds. And look at the difference there. You really can't tell with these pencils what color they are from the outside. Look how much more beautiful and vibrant the colors are on the paper. And there's quite a big difference between them. This one would be great for sort of holly berries or something like that. This one would be fantastic for a peach sort of sunset. So before you start with your paintings, I want you to swatch all of your colors, and make yourself a little chart. Don't forget to label them as you go along. It's quite hard to identify them later on. At this point in the video, if you're enjoying the video and getting some value from it, could I ask you please to click the like button, the thumbs up button. It helps the YouTube algorithm push this video out to more people. If you can like, share, subscribe, or even leave me a nice comment, I can help to teach more people how to paint and draw. Now we've seen that watercolor pencils blend out easily with water and become paint, but there are actually some special ways that you need to do this to ensure that you end up with some beautiful blends and not just muddy areas. So let's look a little more at blending techniques. Now, what I can do is I can overlay one color with another and get a mixture of the two colors. So just like mixing two colors on a paint palette, I can mix a pink here and I can take some blue over the top. Now we would imagine if we mix a pink and a blue, we would get some kind of lilac. There's quite a lot of yellow in both of these shades, so I would expect sort of a dull lilac color. But let's have a go and see how that works out. So we've blended here. There we are. So you've got two colors together and you've made a third color. So that's something you can do if perhaps you don't own many colors. You can mix your own colors by blending. Let's think as well about if we were doing something like a flower petal and it blended out to a white area at the end. So this is very, very similar to those color charts that we just made below. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put my pigment up one end like this. Now, if I just start with the water at the end where the pigment is, so in other words, if I start down here and start blending that color up, what will happen is that color will go right to the end here. We won't get a sort of a faded out effect. So in this case, what I would do, just like with the color swatches, is you'll start up this end, and we're going to go backwards, and we're gonna to go towards this paint here. Now, of course, you'll have to spread it up a little bit, but it's just gonna keep it under a lot more control by doing it this way than it otherwise would. And can you see here, we're ending up with this beautiful blended edge. I'm just picking up any excess water and dabbing it onto my tissue paper here, like this. And you can spread if you want the color to go up the sides perhaps, you can spread it very slightly up the sides like this and see how much control we've got by going from light to dark. And that's something you always want to do when you're working with watercolor pencils. Now, a third way of blending is to have one color that fades into another color. So let's try that. So I've got quite a strong color here. I've got a purple, 
Let's put some of this down. And then I've got a green. These are quite different colours. They're going to make quite a muddy colour where they overlap, which would be expected. But we want to have a little bit of the brightness of the colours as well. So again, if I take my water and just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, I'm going to blend this together and we're going to end up like our first example with just one colour. I want to preserve both of these colours and get them sort of blending into each other. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start again. Let's start this edge here and come out. So almost blending that colour by itself. And then we're going to blend the other colour by itself. And you'll notice I cleaned my paintbrush in between. So like this. Now I'll clean my paintbrush again, dry it slightly. And then I'm just going to join those two areas together in the middle like this without over blending. So we've got now one colour transitioning into another colour. But we can still see both of those individual colours. So in a moment, I'm going to show you how you would start drawing and painting an actual subject. But first of all, just want to talk to you about water levels. So how do you know how much water to use on your brush? It's really quite important. So I've roughly scribbled three squares of scarlet red here. So let's look at the wrong way and the right way to add water to these and to blend them. So the first one, I'm going to use too much water and I'm really sort of putting a lot of water on here. Though it looks okay, you'll find that as it dries, we'll get lots of drying lines appear here because just like watercolour, if an area dries unevenly, if you leave puddles of paint, you're going to find that you get back runs and drying lines and sort of marks where you get one area of water drying before another. So let's look at another way to do it wrong, which is not to put enough water on. So I've got a fairly dry brush here and it's just a little bit streaky. You're not getting an even application there. Now if you find that even though you apply the right amount of water you're still getting lots of lines underneath when it dries there are two things that could be wrong. One could be that you're not applying the pencil very evenly. It's important to apply it evenly to build it up gradually. Try and keep that application as smooth as possible not press too hard in places. That's one problem. The other one is that you may have cheaper pencils and cheaper pencils simply don't dissolve as well. So let's look at our last example and let's do this one properly. So now I've got enough water that the area is turning into paint nicely, but I'm not leaving any puddles. And so what we're going to get here is we're going to get a nice even application that will dry with pure even colour. So next, let's look at how to actually start a painting. What are the stages that you go through, how to do the initial drawing and how to progress through to the end of your picture. So there are many different ways of using watercolour pencils and approaching doing a painting in watercolour pencils. But if you're a beginner, the way I would advise you to start is really to pretty much draw the whole thing in watercolour pencils and then add the water afterwards. So put all of the colours in that you see, all of the lights, and then add the water in. You're going to find you need to work in several layers. It's not going to look right with the first application of water. You then let it dry and then you work another layer of watercolour pencils on top, seeing areas that you want to darken or make brighter or just clarify a little bit. I would also start by doing your underdrawing in the watercolour pencil rather than doing it in graphite pencil, which will tend to remain on the paper afterwards. So I'm going to draw a leaf here and we're going to imagine that we're just drawing this whole leaf. So maybe I've got some light areas to the leaf. I'm actually going to add a little bit of yellow into my leaf. And you'll notice that the outline color that I chose is close to the color of the leaf. So if you're doing pink flowers, start with um, a pink outline. If you're doing something that's got lots and lots of colors, you could just choose something very neutral like a pale beige or something like that. Or you could swap between the colors of the pencils as you go through the drawing. What you want is for them to disappear. I wouldn't, for instance, draw the outline of a green leaf with a red pencil, unless of course it was going to be some kind of autumn leaf. So let's imagine that the bit down here is darker. So I'm going to put some darker color down here and trying to keep it sort of fairly nicely blended. Can do a little bit of cross hatching and maybe as well we want some dark veins in the center. 
Let's just for now put a dark line along the center. It's actually quite a good idea with details like veins to put them on in the second layer because you could find that they just blur out completely in the, uh, in the first layer. So we'll just put a line down the middle there and then later on after our first application of water and it's dried, we can go in and put more details on. So there's your underdrawing. I'm going to do what I advised you to do before, which is work light to dark. And that will mean that we don't lose these lovely bright colors on this side and drag the dark over everything. I'm gonna go along here and you'll see, we're still maintaining that center line there. It's just getting a little bit more blurred and we can work like this. Now there are other ways of using watercolor pencils. Some people dip them into the water. That tends to make uh, YouTube viewers apoplectic with rage. I had one guy once, um, because I dipped my pencil in the water, you know, he was beyond furious with me. He wrote me a whole, you know, sort of 20 paragraph rant about my abuse of pencils. And all I wanted to say to him was, it's a pencil, it's just a pencil. Even the most expensive ones in the world will only be, you know, three or four dollars or whatever price. So um, let's not be too precious about our things. I don't tend to dip them in the water. Not a thing that you can do if you want to, is you can actually take some of the pigment straight from the tip like this, and you can just pick up a little bit of color. Let's say we had a little bit of red in this leaf. It'll go slightly brown, of course, because we're adding it to green but we could add a little bit of color like that. Too much water on there, isn't there? So I'm going to dry my brush slightly and just blend that out. So that would be great for a first layer. As I said, I'd let it dry after that, and then I'd work on top. Maybe it's got um, a little bit of dark towards the tip. Maybe there's a bit more of a stem. Perhaps we need some more fine veins. So you work your work up in layers. But if you're a beginner, I advise you to start by pretty much drawing and shading the whole thing in first. So now you understand the process, let's talk about what subjects are actually best for using with watercolor pencils. Now, because they are quite time consuming and quite fiddly and quite good for detail, I would start by choosing smaller subjects, you know, a bee, a moth, a flower, something small. Of course, you can use them for larger things like landscapes. If you're doing that, you might want to use them alongside watercolor paints. And I have to tell you, they're completely compatible with watercolor paints. You only need one or two colors to get started. Let me show you how to use them with watercolors. So let's talk about using watercolor pencil along with watercolor when you've got larger areas to cover and it would simply take too long just to use watercolor pencil alone. Now this is a painting that I'm currently working on. It's almost finished. You can see it's not completely finished. I'm actually doing this for my patrons at the moment over on Patreon. This will also be available as a mini course in a few months time. Now, if you have a look at this light pink flower here, you can see that I've actually made lines on here with watercolor pencil and look at the center of the flower here. I have also used the watercolor pencil to make these little marks. It's so time saving. It works so well with watercolor. Nobody will even notice that you've gone into another medium. It's actually my favorite way of using them. Of course, you don't have to only use them for small subjects like this. They can also be used for landscapes. So let's think about a landscape, for example. And you know, if I had a large sky, it's going to look frankly much better in watercolor paint because the paint is going to apply much more evenly and smoothly. So I can pop some color in like this in my sky. I can bring it down. Imagine we had, um, maybe we have a a horizon line here as well. And I'm coming down with my sky like this. Let's go into a little bit of green down the base here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add some watercolor pencils for details. So here I've got some of that green and I'm drawing directly onto wet paper here, drawing in to wet paint. And this is a fantastic way of working watercolor pencils into traditional watercolors. We can add different colors at a time. So I'm getting some sort of distant trees in here. Maybe I even want a bit of a pathway. So I've got a little bit of brown here. The paint's actually starting to dry now, but that's fine. And I'm taking my path in here. 
Another thing that I often use watercolour pencils for is for creating sort of tall grasses and reeds. Now you can see that's dried a little bit there. So I can just get a damp brush, blend it a bit. And perhaps in the foreground, I want some tall grasses growing. So this is actually my favourite way of using watercolour pencils. Now if you haven't done any painting before, you want to try using your pencils just by themselves to start with because you'll find it a little bit easier to control the outcomes. But once you've moved on and done a bit of watercolour painting, you'll be able to use these pencils to add all kinds of details. So do let me know in the comments if you've had a go at watercolour pencils and if you've got any questions about them before you leave this video. Don't forget to pop into the video description. I've got some free downloadable PDFs there, including one about watercolour pencils. There's even a free course that you can take. And I also have currently an offer on my watercolour pencils course. You can click the link and read all about it without any obligation. It's all about watercolour pencils flower paintings. And if you'd like to watch another video right now all about the mistakes that you can make when using watercolour pencils, you can watch that video right now.